Yes, it's another unboxing. Um, yeah, it's a different brand, that's, that's okay. Um, I've got a lot, of, a lot of unboxing videos all close together, um, purely because I've ordered lots of stuff. I've got some build videos coming, uh, including a war rig, which I keep on talking about. I'm also going to do the yellow paint uh, tutorial in the next couple of days. I've got a commission I'm working on that I need to finish today, though, so hopefully today or tomorrow, depending on what day it is. Today it's currently Wednesday. Um, but yeah, so it's a box from Anvil Industry. I've been using Anvil Industry for a couple of years now. Uh, their Gasland specific range has been around for a little while. Not quite a year, I don't think. Um, but I've been using their 28mm Heroic stuff. Their conversion bits and their figures for, was it like proc for proxy stuff for Warhammer 40k for a little while. So unlike a lot of uh, other firms, they don't make Orc stuff. They make more Imperial Guard Imperium stuff, that sort of thing. Um, they also do some good stuff like can like candles. I can't imagine how how much how good it is to get some to scale candles um, from a firm in the UK as well. So that's always, for example, and bullet casings and boxes and crates and, and bases, etc., etc., etc. I've got some of their bases as well. They're, they're they're pretty good. They're base toppers. Anyway, um, so yeah, Anvil Industry. Uh, their gas stands range seventeen items in their range. And the prices are pretty uh, reasonable, I think, anyway. I know what's in this box. Full disclosure, I paid for this box. No, not gifted to me or anything like that. Um, it came from my own money, same as all the other unboxings I'd, I've done and will do. And that's purely because I need bits, because I build so many cars so quickly. Um, Quickish. I've slowed down this week because I had a bit of a, a break for a couple of days. So I don't get burnt out. Anyway, uh, let's crack this open quick and see what's inside. I know what's inside, but it's always fun to talk about it as we go. Video will follow the same the same um, template. Especially when I call it a template as the other videos. Devil Industry. Daughters of the Burning Rose. That's their uh let me see that. It's Daughters of the Burning Rose. That's the exact name for it. I'll double check. If it isn't, I'll correct it. They're very much like Sisters of Battle, but they're not Sisters of Battle. They are some cool sculpts. Um, yeah, spot on sculpts, actually. For the historic stuff. Blah, blah, blah. So they come with safe instructions, print on the back of your invoice. I don't think I address the invoice, is it? No. And that's what I ordered. Some engines, some light machine guns, flamethrowers, wooden explosive ammo boxes, nitrogen upgrades, and inline heavy machine guns. Some, some cool stuff. Um, it's not full, full, uh, uh, a box. Let me just shift that up because I'm out of focus, out of range of the camera. Um, because they, they've got very little wastage on their sprues. Their sprues are really well set out and their bits are, are, are fairly good. So your average price for a sprue is about four quid, which it's about, uh, to me, that's about average pricing. I would probably spend four quid. Some some things are a little bit more money. Like I've got some of their Rams. Um, I can't show you the Ram. One of the well, I can. No, I can't show you the Ram because it's on something special, so I can't show it. Um, I can show you it on another vehicle. Though, so that's fine. Um, I think they're about six quid for for two Rams, but they're massive. They're massive chunks of of material. So anyway, let's crack into these. Yeah. Get rid of that. Don't need that. This is what we're here for. Cool little baggies as well. You can fit a little. Some of them you can fit like a uh, hot wheels cars in. I always keep the baggies. I store all my loose cars in bags just so I can get the scratch to buggery. And that's a cool little art card. Got a couple of them. I like them postcards like that. Cool handy things. Okay, so I've ordered <clears throat> their flamethrower sprue, which is two flat panel mounted flamethrowers, a turret mounted flamethrowers, and two different tanks. I actually just used this on a Big Air Bel Air build as a nitrous tank. I think it fits the build quite well as well. Their turrets are cool. I didn't order any on this because I've got some. Here's an example here though. So I do like the Crows style modular turrets. I mean, when I say the Crows, this is like the one of the military acronym for the automatic turrets. There's no way a crewman can fit in there. So the Crows system is like a remote controlled, all weather, all light turret which I think is pretty cool. They also do turret mount rings, etc. I'll dig a few bits out of my bits box in a minute and I'll show you some of their other stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's how their turret mounted stuff fits. So it's all modular. 
Uh, I've got no other turret mounted stuff on here. They also do machine guns uh, in turret mounts as well. Similar to these, they do one of each of these styles, which I think is really, really cool. Um, so you've got flamethrowers, you've got inline uh, light machine guns. Uh, they've got ammo belts running up the side of the, the two, two of the bigger ones, the little ones are a little more dinky. Um, the ammo, ammo belts run off the side's cool. Same before, some of the firms don't have ammo belts for their stuff. And then you've got inline heavy machine guns, HMGs. So you've got some, a couple of uh, almost cannons um, and a couple of mini guns. Who doesn't like mini guns? Come on. Uh, then I bought some crates. These are wooden crates, they do metal crates as well. I like both. I have a, a few metal crates in my bits box at the moment. I'm low on wooden crates. And storage wise for a bit of variety, I always like to use the different different things. Then you've got, um, I think I call this, uh, uh, yeah, so this is engines and you've got nitrogen. So this is this is basically the top half, apart uh, from the exhaust of the little trumpets, the top half of an engine on these. So you've got blowers, blowers, one with a carb obviously on the top and like a little tank. And then you've got the same, again, obviously this is a three, a two and a one, of just the, like, the attachments. So something like a, a 32 Ford engine where you've got the, the, the carburetors on the top. I hate that, by the way. People do that. Sorry. Find my fingers in the thing. The carburetors, I hate that. But I do it all the time myself, so it makes me a hypocrite. Um, so yeah, so like on the 32 Ford, with the top half just literally visible carburetors, you can whip that surface flat and bang one of these on, which I've done on a couple of occasions. I'll show you when we move across to the other side of the room in a minute. Um, have I got one on this side of the room? No. No. Anyway, so yeah, so they mimic each other quite well as it is basically a, a, a slice off the top. So with the top half parts, you could stick them straight onto the, onto the bonnet of a car. It's up to yourself or you can uh, cut a little hole out for them. Whereas with the more fuller engines without the exhaust, you can you can sink them in. I tend to drill a couple of holes, enlarge them, then file them together, make a square cut out. Um, and then plop them in. I don't know why I'm making sound effects today, crazy. Uh, resin wise, or casting wise, spot on. Hardly any flash, ever. Um, I've had a couple of miscasts before in the parts. So I bought uh, in their 28 mil stuff. Uh, they did like a trench range, which is like World War One slash style, uh, 40k style, uh, like trench raiders. And I, I, I bought in on their, on, it was before, it wasn't before Kickstarter, but I bought in on their, on their uh, like I pledged before they, they released them. It, was before, it wasn't on Kickstarter though. And uh, some of them, and the first lot I got were fine. And then the second lot I got, the casting were a bit dodge. Like some of the weapons had slipped. I contacted them, they sent me new ones pretty much straight away. Um, so if you ever get any or any slips or any casting errors, they're, they're pretty good with stuff like that. Just sent them a few photos. They sent me some new ones. The sprues I had that, are, that, that were knackered, um, I just I just did whatever I wanted to do with them. I think I, I've been some and I kept some bits for like base scatter and stuff like that. But with these, never had any problems. I've been through lots of these, of these uh, Gasland sprues cool thing is is obviously with their sprues they label all their sprues so obviously you get the animal industry uh uh mark on there and you got gl for gas lands and you got inline light machine guns heavy machine guns engines engines uh, nitro obviously nitrous oxide uh, wooden grenades and flame for us so they're all labeled the other cool thing is on the reverse of the sprues so as i was going has little detail detail accoutrements, I suppose you'd say. So you've got stuff that you can mount on flat panels. Now, I haven't used any of these. I've still got a load of these in my bits box. I'm just trying to th think. Of, uh, I might have used some of the lights, actually. So different sprues have got different things on them. You've got like a chainsaw, uh, some oil cans, vents, some lights, etc., etc. Boxes of bullets. I think that's cool. Because that sprue part's wasted. I mean, I've made stuff out of sprue. I had a period of time before I bought some styrene rod that I was using these little tree parts, the round ones, and cutting them into rivets before I, I, I purchased, way back when, before I purchased uh, actual styrene uh, sprue 
uh, styrofoam, styrofoam rods, sorry. So I was using that and I've used square sprue from Games Workshop and, and other firms to, to make bits for terrain and stuff out of, out of the sprue they come from. But this is clever. No one else does this. They don't do it on all their bits. The Gaslands bits are like this. It gives you a bit more with each purchase, if that makes sense. It gives you a bit more. Okay, so you've got the guns and the bits you wanted and the engine bits, etc. you wanted, but you've also got extras. So they're full range. Just pop on their website. It's a UK company. Um, I'm reviewing a lot of UK companies because obviously I'm in the UK and they're easy to get to. So their, review, their, their items consist of armoured turrets, engines, flamethrowers, which we've got here today, and the engines, inline heavy machine guns, which we've got inline light machine guns. I do a large dozer blade, which is wicked. I can show you that part of it because the rest is mounted on a war, war rig commission I'm doing. I'm not showing you that. Sorry. Uh, light turrets are cool. Um, so do turret plates as well for them to sit on for the light and the heavy turrets. The light turrets are cool though um, because they basically change the inline guns into one of these sort of types of guns, like the flat plate mounted guns, or you just match it up with a drill bit like I've done uh, on a couple of things. Buzz a hole in your surface and you've got a 360 then without having a bulky turret. I'll show you the light turrets in a bit. Metal explosive and ammo boxes, missile launchers, armor plating. They do riveted armor plating as well. I've got an example of that across the other side of the room. Uh, nitrous slash engine upgrades, which is what that sprue there is actually called. And then you've got turret machine guns, which I've already got turret plates, um, wooden explosive ammo boxes, and rocket launchers, which are cool as well. Because they're not, there's a standard, there's a, there's a multiple rocket launcher, and then you've got a, a couple of standalone rockets by themselves, which I quite like. I, I think that's decent as well. So the range isn't massive, there's no wheels or figures or anything like that. It doesn't need to be. Um, Anvil's obviously also uh, a friend of Gaslands. Every film I've spoke about so far on, on, on these review videos has been a friend of Gaslands. That's the easiest the easiest piece of kit like, online to find bits is just to go on to Gaslands, down to Friends of Gaslands, look at the list, and there you go. It gives you... By country, slash region, everything you need. So, if they're already a friends of Gaslands, it's not an affiliate link, so so to speak, and it's not it's not like these are the only people, but it gives you a, a as a as a as a maker, it gives you a quick reference guide um, to where you can get them and what you can get from where. Um, so, if you're in the states, for example, it will tell you. Um, a, a, Anvil, don't don't. They distribute themselves. I don't think they have a US distributor. I'm not sure. I can always have a look on. I've got my tablets up here. Out of shot. <laughs> so I don't. I was making notes for the last video and it all went a bit wrong. Um, so yeah. So I've got my tablets up so I can see what I'm doing as I go. Um, so even though we're in a bit of uh, stem at the UK at the moment with, with lockdown etc. Um, they're still shipping. It takes a little bit longer. And it's like I said in the last couple of videos when I was having a bit of a winch, which I'm not going to today. Um, things that take a bit longer, they take a bit longer. I ordered these last week, Thursday, it's Wednesday today. They came this morning. That's decent for me. I think that's decent. I think I ordered them late Thursday as well. So really, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, three working days. National crisis. Not, I can't complain. I cannot complain at all. Uh, and, and you shouldn't, and I won't. So there you go. Um, yeah, that's decent with the amount of time it took to get here. So anyway... I'm waffling, so I'll stop this bit and we'll switch across to the other side of the room and we'll talk about some completed uh, cars and I'll just quickly, actually before we go to the other side of the room, I'll whip out my bits box and gather a few other bits on the table so everyone can see. Um, yeah, we'll do that first. Cool. Now I've zoomed the camera in a little bit more and we're back, literally about a minute later, but you didn't need to see that. Uh, so these are some of the other bits I've got in stock at the moment. I haven't got everything out because I'm really just talking about the stuff I got delivered today. Um, this is one of the turret plates I was on about. So the turrets then sit on top and rotate. I'll give you an example over the other side of the room in a minute of where I've just drilled the same size hole in the top of the surface. And these are their like light turrets, which are cool. So they're quite cool. Let's see there, let's see. Whoop. No fancy zoom, I just moved the arm. Um, so they're quite cool, a bit more ramshackle looking, which I quite like, I like the idea of. And these are their turret mounted guns. So you've got a turret mounted flamethrower as well. So you, you, you scope for individuality, um, 
or, or mix and match how you you can you can build your kit up however you want to in whatever combination etc etc so guns in turrets guns off the turrets etc I've used these before and cut the the pin off and just mount them as flat turret uh, like flat mounts especially this one this cool little spring it's a proper ramshackle looking at the back I quite like that for like a like certain builds that's what you want other things they've got whoop move them out of the way the armor plates I've got an example of a vehicle built with riveted armor plates this is part part of their non riveted armor plate spring it's about that big normally there's obviously nothing on the back that's all taken up with bits um, but I've used the rest on a commission build so you can't see that until that's done unfortunately and then we've got some metal ammo crates I've used the rest already um, yeah, so that's a little review of the bits that I've got currently kicking about here. Um, we'll nip across the other side of the room and we'll quickly talk about a couple of models uh, with some bits on. Uh, I look painted up, etc, etc. Okay then, we're just the other side of the room at my display table slash game board. Uh, I'm just going to talk through a few of the cars, um, with some of the other industry bits that I've got over here. Um, I haven't got a vast amount, and I've got a few to paint yet, and I'm a couple of uh, commissions we've got Anvil Industry bits on, uh, but they're in process. I'm not showing them until they're done, and or the owner, the owner of them has received them, because that's not fair. I don't mind doing that like that. Um, as for stuff over here, like I said, I've got a few cars here. Um, I've just sold a load of cars that have got exclusively Anvil Industry bits on, um, which is what it is. Um, that's the whole point. I build some cars to sell, and the rest I build for me. Um, so some of these are mine and a couple of these are for sale, I remember as well, so that, that is what it is as well. Uh, so we were talking about stuff before, so like the turret, so this is one of the turret, oh, where's the camera, there it is. This is one of the turret plates from one of their missile launchers, like the four barrel style one, a bit like the one that's in uh, Commando with Ronnie Schwarzenegger, and that style missile launcher. And this one's also got one of their hood scoop parts, so the top half part just attached to the bonnet. I didn't drill anything. Let me just move over a bit. There we go. Didn't drill anything on that. I just mounted it to that on that Volvo. And then we've got a couple of their inline machine guns. And this really, really simple custom that isn't as simple as it first looks, um, as it's jacked up, etc. A um, couple of their inline machine guns there. This high patrol vehicle. Uh, I've got another one of their, their missile turret. This is a really good missile turret. You see, like the, the, the eye. The infrared and the night vision, etc., etc. On it, and that's literally just a hole drilled into the roof, and then popped straight in. So what that means from that point of view, the hole drilled in the roof. Say I wanted to do a different loadout, I wanted to use that flamethrower turret that I've got over the other side of the room. I'll just bang it straight on, pull it off, bang it straight on. Engines, one of their through the bonnet engines. So I cut the end, cut the bonnet, washed it through, made it on there like that. Then on this uh, exoskeleton car, got a pair of their inline machine guns. These are cool, these inline machine guns. Probably one of my favourite looking machine guns that they do. Uh, purely because they look a little bit like the uh, World War One fighter. I like the Maxim sort of guns. You saw towards the end of the, the First World War. Mounted on um, like fighters, etc, etc. So much stuff going on on this one over here as well. <laughs> uh, that's literally just a gun and a paint job on that one. Talking about the front rams, everything else on this is non ammo industry. But this is one of their front rams that I've used on the front of this. Does it fit, fit quite nice? Oh. Doing this for an iPhone is really cat handy because the lens is over one side and I'm moving over one the opposite side. Amateurs. Terrible one I. Uh, and then the last one to show you is this one here. Now this is part of a, a set um, that's going out uh, to a guy in America. But this riveted am armor that's on here is not Anvil's riveted armor. I made this myself to match uh, some of their riveted armor. There's a mini gun there. Don't think I've got a painted version of it. I'm just having a look in my drawer. No, I still on my to-do list. Still in my uh, build pile. Um, yeah, so the, the riveted armor is very, very similar to the, the version I've made just here on that um, Mustang. 
uh, that's it really um yeah that's it the, the stuff is good again like i said before i'm not gonna i'm not gonna uh, talk about anything that's that, that's crap it's just not worth it i think it's good it's good and i'll talk about it but don't talk about it. it doesn't mean to say it's crap it just means that i haven't seen it um if something is crappy crappy then i, I probably will talk about it because people need to know um, but yeah, this stuff. Do I recommend the Anvil Industry stuff? Yes. Is the build quality good? Yes. 100%. Is it good value for money? Yes. Well, this is the thing with this stuff. To some people, the, 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 the buying, buying stuff and buying parts is expensive. And it is exp It's not unexpensive. My, my motto is that my hobby has to... Well, the rule in my house is that my hobby has to almost pay for itself. So I do some commissions. And I do some... I do some with this and with, with Warhammer stuff, do some commissions. Um, I build some stuff, some stuff uh, specifically for eBay. So, so some of the slightly uh, less intense paint jobs, uh, specifically for eBay, and that money then goes back into funding bits and paint, etc., etc. So I'm about to paint uh, an order for some uh, some different uh, weathering paint from Brain Stuff World next week. So look forward to seeing that come in, and we can talk about that as well. I've uh, been after this stuff for a, a long while, and now's as good a time as any for me to get it. I've got a bit of time still at the moment. <laughs> Don't know how long we've got to a, to a free, to, extra free time, should I say? Um, where I've been furloughed, so I might as well get some and have a go with it because there's no time like the present, is there? Um, yeah, and that's it really. Like I say, so there'll be a few more of these videos, and I'll talk about a few more people uh, and companies and individuals that do, do stuff that I buy that I, I think works. Um, and then a bit further down the line, we'll talk about scratch building stuff. Because I do still scratch build stuff. And not every single one of my builds is this brand of machine gun with this brand of engine with this, that, and the other. I still use Hot Wheels stuff on a lot of my builds. Uh, like I cannibalize other Hot Wheels cars, which is part of the scratch building stuff. Like I'll, I'll buy 32 Fords. We talked about 32 Fords about four times today. I'll buy 32 Fords just for the engines. If they're if they're like 50p on eBay, or there's a bulk of them for 50, 60p a car, then I'll buy I'll buy a few cars just for the engines or just for the parts because that's what I want to do. And and for, for one and 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 two, the, the Hot Wheels stuff is still good bits. I mean, I've got this here. It's off screen, so you can see it. Um, it's not Anvil stuff, but it doesn't matter. We'll talk about it anyway. This is a, an Anglia with a 32 Ford front end. Well, it's the engine I, I scratch built the front end. Uh, with a scratch built uh, like scoop, made to look like a, a mailbox, US mailbox, with a couple of dice paint game bits on it. And I front, I've, 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 I've scratch built the, the front axles and the firewall. So I still do scratch built stuff. I'm not all about. Like I say, this bit of kit, but that bit of kit, and this, that, and the other. No, no snob with that. But if I've got the ability to to use these parts and they look good, then why not? You will notice with the Anvil stuff, it, it's not none of them replicate real firearms or real real things. I mean, the the the, the automatic turrets are probably the the closest I get to a real product. Um, a minigun's a minigun, a machine gun's a machine gun. I, I I quite like that about that as well. Their engines are perfectly within scale, in my opinion, as well. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it's me again. Um, probably made everyone jump by just speaking there. But anyway, um, I just want to say a quick thank you uh, to Chad at Televised Carnage for sorting out my new intro and outro. It's the same thing, I'm just playing at both ends. It stops that really cringy, embarrassing, drawn out minute and a bit or me trying to hack a piece of standard music on my editing software to to fit what i want uh, so he's done me a nice quick intro quick outro i love it so thank you very much for that mate um you're a star